It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm taking a look at a small push-your-luck game from Oink Games called Deep Sea Adventure. And Deep Sea Adventure here comes in this tiny little package, as do most Oink games. It is all about uh, diving into the depths, gathering relics, and then rushing back up to the submarine before you run out of air so you can gather some loot. Very straightforward game. Let me give you a look at how this operates, the things you are doing in it. Then we'll come on back up here and I'll tell you if I think it's a good push your luck game. The game's gonna be played over three rounds and the objective of the game is to have the most points from these collected relics at the end of the whole thing. Players are going to be using their divers to dive down into the depth, collect relics, bring them back up before they run out of oxygen and collect those victory points. So to set up, We've got our submarine here with an oxygen tracker. We've got all the player pawns here. I'm going to leave just three on there for the purposes of this overview, representing three players. And then you've got your tokens uh, laid out in increasing depths, getting away from the submarine, which is also an increasing lucrative value for those. And then you've got your two dice here, which only go up to three. They show ones, twos, and threes. And then these tokens that will come into play a little bit later. So, the uh, idea here is you pick a star player, you're going to go around the table until the round is over. You play, as I said, three rounds. The first thing you do is you reduce oxygen equal to however many chips you are holding. And so at the beginning of the very first round, I'll be the star player. I'm not holding any tokens. And so I go right to step two, which is deciding if I am going to continue diving or start coming back up. I haven't even started yet, so that won't happen either. And then I'll roll the dice and I'll move a number of spaces equal to what I've rolled minus however many tokens I happen to be holding. So I'm not holding any, I will move one, two, three, four, five, and once I stop somewhere, then I'm going to decide one of three things. First thing, I can do nothing. Second thing, I can pick up that token, and I would replace that token with one of these uh, placeholders just to denote that there was a space there at the beginning of this round. And third option is, if I happen to already have some tokens, well, I could drop one off uh, to reduce how much oxygen I'm spending, typically. So I'm going to get there. I'm going to do nothing. It'll be the next player's turn. They'll roll. They move uh, two. It'll be the blue player's go. They also roll two. And when you are counting, if someone's in your way, you skip their space. So one, skipping over this one for two. And they will also not start picking anything up. It comes back to me. I will roll a three. One, two, three. I will pick that token up. Once you take one, you put it in front of you, you replace it as I said. Next players go, they'll roll, they roll a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they also will pick that token up. So red's got that token. It is back to blue. Blue will roll, they rolled a three. They will not take one. Comes back to yellow. Yellow, the very first thing they do as you, uh, as I said, First step is reducing oxygen. So I start taking away the reserves. And once this oxygen runs out, anyone who has not come back up to the sub is going to drop everything they have and forfeit any score for that round. Then I roll, and I rolled a four, but I'm holding a token, so I only move three. One, two, three. I'll take that one, replace it, and it would be Rhett's go where they use up one oxygen, they roll, that's four minus the one they're holding, one, two, three, and uh, they'll take that one as well. And again, don't forget, after you have uh, burnt up some oxygen, the very first decision you make is whether you are in fact turning around. And so that's, uh, that's the very first thing you need to decide. This is going to continue, blue will go, Let's say they pick up that token there, and then it comes back to yellow. Yellow says, okay, I'm gonna burn up two oxygen, and I will start going back up. And so they'll roll, and this is five minus the two they're holding, one, two, three, and so on. Once they're out of the, uh, out of the uh, depth, when they're, once they're back on the submarine, they stop burning through oxygen. And again, usually someone will be super risky and just not make it all the way back up. 
Once the round is over, let's say red did not make it back, uh, the yellow player keeps these, the blue player keeps these, we are going to remove all the tokens which were placeholders, we are going to shrink the track here, and then the uh, players that did not make it back are going to drop off their tokens at the very end of the line in stacks of up to three tokens. And so again, if red happened to have more tokens themselves, they would have dropped up to three. Any others that get dropped off at the end because someone did not make it back, start a new stack of three tokens. You play that three times, and then at the end of the game, each player will hopefully have some of these. They are going to reveal how many they have. So this player's got their 13 points. I have my 13 as well. And this player has seven. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. I like my pusher luck games to be on the simpler side, and this one certainly nails that. The game is very simple. Choices are quick, turns are quick, everything is, nothing outstays, it's welcome, right? So I enjoy that very much. And the, the dice rolling, the knowing when to turn back around, the knowing, especially the knowing when to start picking up tokens and start burning through the oxygen, they're all clever little decisions. And they lead to an interesting package overall. The one negative thing I have to say about the game is I find there's an interesting... There's an interesting sort of group think to it that can sometimes lead to a dud of a game. And here's what I mean. Sometimes the whole group is thinking the same thing. We're going to go down as deep as we can and then start grabbing everything up from the very bottom of the ocean. And that usually leads to a whole lot of dead people, especially if one person figures out that that's sort of suicidal and they just start picking up things halfway through. And then everyone who rushed to the bottom doesn't make it back up. I've, I've actually played games of this where, with, with a good number of people, four or five people, where everyone ended up dying all three rounds, and one person on the very last round just figured, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to run in, grab some small point token off the top, and run back out. And that's weird. It, it's, and again, I, I, it's possibly a group-dependent thing, but it happens almost every time I've played this game where it's, I don't know what it is, maybe there's just, everyone is sort of on the same wavelength, there is a, a weird aspect to the oxygen sort of sneaking up on you, maybe that's it. It's hard, it's a hard thing to put my finger on, but I, 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 it does feel sometimes very punishing when you finish one third the game and your score is nothing, right? And then you play the second third of the game and that score is nothing. So, And of course, there's ways to mitigate that. You can drop off tokens, but by the time you're thinking about dropping off tokens along the way, you're probably, it's probably too late. Uh, so there's all those things to it. But the game is interesting. It's a well-designed game. I, I would say it's a, it's a nice filler. Definitely, again, a really tiny box you can take with you. Plays up to six players and is going to give you some interesting choices as to as to how much you push your luck, when you choose to turn around, all those things. As long as you don't fall into that trap of everyone sort of being on the same wavelength, you know, the group think idea, then I think you're going to have some fun with this one. Uh, that's it for me. Deep Sea Adventure. It's different. It's unique. And I would recommend it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.